Let's do a shifted example. Instead of just doing one conic, I'm going to do three at once. Um, we're going to sketch the graphs of all three of these equations. This has a plus sign, this has a minus, and then this is minus plus instead of plus minus. Otherwise, they're all the same. And the reason for doing those all together is that these go together in the way that I showed in the other video. They all share the same box. The box is the key. Uh, I was going to bold that, but oh well. The box is the key. And uh, so first we basically would need to find that box. Well, the first thing for a shifted, these guys are shifted. So the first thing we need to find is the center and the new axes of symmetry. In the unshifted case, those axes were the x and y axes, and the center was the origin. But now we just need to find the new one. OK, well, that's not hard, given that this is written as the quantity x plus 3 squared, or the quantity y minus 2 squared. We'll do some other problems where we're actually going to have to do some algebra, and in particular, do the fundamental operation of completing the square uh, to, to put it in this form. But here, I'm just focusing on the just the geometry here. OK, so we've shifted. So these are all shifted. Let's see how much. It's going to be um, 3 to the, and then see if you can remember which way it is. When it's x plus 3, I claim that's going to be shifted 3 to the left, which is a little bit backwards. Oh, I don't need that. Which is backwards from what people tend to guess, but we've been doing this for a while. And 2 up. And again, that seems backwards, but we're going we're gonna to be able to check that real pretty soon. Okay, so the new center, the new center is at uh, minus three comma two, and the new axes of symmetry are going to be x equals minus three and y equals two. We could start graphing at this point, let me show you what we'd get at this point. We could just put those in as dotted lines. Um, the only problem is we don't yet have a scale for our graph. So it's a little premature to graph these because we don't know exactly how far our ellipses and hyperbolas are going to go in, in various directions. So this we could graph this, but I wouldn't actually say that's, a, that's the best idea quite yet. Okay, so next thing to do is get the box. Okay, so let's just focus on the ellipse. The box, of course, is the box that the ellipse just barely fits in, and that's an equivalent to saying we want to find the, the major vertices, the honest-to-God vertices, and what I often call the minor vertices. That's the intersections of the ellipse with the, the minor axis. So how do we do that? Well, we just remember how it worked. The old ellipse, the unshifted ellipse, that would have had x-intercepts at, um, and that's determined by this number, that would have been at plus or minus 4, comma 0, and y-intercepts at 0, comma, plus or minus 5. Because remember, that's just a cover-up. You just cover up the y part and get the x, and you cover up the x part and get the y. Well, that would be if the plus 3 and the minus 2 weren't there. Well, all that's happening is that I still do the same cover-up. It's as if this isn't here, and what am I going to get? Let's do an example of that, and then I'll just show you the quick way. If I cover this up, if I set y equal to 2, which is one of the axes of symmetry, one of these dotted lines right here, if I set y equals 2, I'm just intersecting the ellipse with one of its axes of symmetry. If I set y equals 2, that still has the effect of covering up the y part. And then I just get quantity x plus 3 squared over 4 squared equals 1. And I can solve that. It's just x plus 3. Yeah, I didn't mean to do that. x plus 3 equals plus or minus 2, or plus or minus 4. OK. So in other words, x equals minus 3 plus or minus 4, or x equals minus 7 or 1. So that's doing algebra, but the easy way to do that is just to take these old intercepts that you know you can read off by just putting a plus or minus in front of a, and just subtract 3 from them, because that was the final answer. We can just cut to the chase right here. Okay, we know this is always going to work in the same way. 
So the x-intercepts are going to be minus 7 and 1. And then similarly, the quick way is going to be y equals, we take those plus or minus 5 and we shift them up 2. So just 2 plus or minus 5, which is equal to 7 and minus 3. Okay, so there's the intercepts. And so the other way to say that is those are the these lines, x equals minus 7, x equals 1, y equals 7, y equals minus 3. Those are the box. And here's the box here. Okay, so we've got the axes of symmetry, the center right here. We've got the box, which was pretty easy to get. We're going to use the corners in a minute. That's where we just have like x equals 1, which was one of the x coordinates, and y equals minus 3, which was one of the y coordinates. We're going to use those four corners of the box to get the hyperbola. But right now, we're going to, we can sketch the ellipse because here's the four sides, the middles of the sides of the box gives you the ellipse. And let's just go down and see where that is. And there's the ellipse. And let me actually delete all the other graphs here. OK, bring that up with our stuff. There we go. So here's the ellipse. We just sketch freehand an ellipse. And I know I'm cheating, but I'm on the computer. And uh, we freehand an ellipse between those four points that are the sides of the box. So we're really almost done with the whole problem because we've got the box. And we know that we can do um, the hyperbola pretty easily. Why don't we go ahead and get the foci, too? I don't think I explicitly suggested that at the start. But let's go ahead and get the foci for the ellipse. Foci for the ellipse. We know that c squared is a squared minus b squared. And I chose that to be nice. Uh, that was, or did I choose that to be nice? I can't remember. Oh, yeah. OK. Which one is A and which one is B? Remember, for an ellipse, it's the bigger that's A. The major axis is going to be vertical for this guy. And um, so the foci for the ellipse, oh, you know what? I think I oh, messed up. Let's see. So that's going to be 25 minus 16 equals 9, or C equals 3. And I think I'm going to have to change one of my graphs because I think I Changed my mind in the middle of making this thing up. OK, so there's the 5 squared minus 4 squared is going to be 3. And I think what I did when I set it up, I, hi, yeah, I had, I changed, let's, just, let's change that. I have the wrong, these totally don't look like the foci of the ellipse. They should be on the long axis. So let's change that real quick. So those x's should be at minus 3, because they're on the major axis. And then 2 plus 3 is 5. And then, um, OK. And then the other one should be at minus 2. And 2 minus 3 is minus 1. Let's try that. And it takes a minute to plot, because it's plotting a lot of implicit stuff. It's a little slower. Hello. OK. Ugh. Oh, minus 3. Yeah. OK. Sorry about the delay here. It was, uh, you probably noticed that. Uh, yeah, I just put in a 2 instead of a 3. OK. So we've got the um, foci of our ellipse. And we've got, uh, and oh, yeah, I put, in the, um, I put in the asymptotes as well. So let's get the asymptotes for the hyperbola, there's really nothing to do. You just connect the dots of the corners. If we want the equations, which somebody might ask us for, well, we can memorize various stuff, but always the easiest way to do that is to take this guy and just remember the trick that I think I had in another video already, is it's as if this were 0. Uh, the way I usually say it, it's you want to think of the asymptotes with x and y super huge. So this this number is going to be these numbers are going to be so big. The difference being one is not that difference for the, from the difference being zero. And if we solve that, just push the y over to the other side. Then there's there's the equation, and we just square root everything, and we just get x plus three over four equals plus or minus y minus 2 over 5. And that's just exactly 
an x equals plus or minus y type equation, but just shifted by, my, by 3 to the left and 2 up. So if you want the equations, that's the easy way. Just change the 1 in the standard form of hyperbola to 0. Okay, so now we're, we're getting pretty close on our picture. Now we just have to graph those two hyperbolas. Let me just take up one more time. Remember the other two hyperbolas were the plus with x plus and y minus and x minus and y plus. Those share the same asymptotes because if I change these to zero, it doesn't matter. These are just negatives of each other. They share the same shift, the same x and y stretches. And so I can just plot that in. And of course, I'm going to have to change that because that's just embarrassing that I got that, had those plotted in. And we're just going to change those x's one more time. So that was minus 3, 5. And this was minus 3, minus 1. But then we're ready to go. Uh, except one more thing. So while I was plotting that, the other thing I went ahead and plotted ahead of time, and I think I did this one correctly, is the O's are the foci of the hyperbolas. So we've got the box. We've got the axes of symmetry. We've got the asymptotes. We've got the ellipse and its foci. And then the foci for the hyperbola that's c squared there is a squared plus b squared. I just want to remember that it's further, the foci for the hyperbola are further away from the center than vertices. So it's a squared plus b squared. And so c squared is equal to uh, 25 plus 16. So that's a little bit nastier. c is the square root of 41 which is about um, 6.4, I believe. I calculated it bef beforehand. And so we just go 6.4 units on either side, on all four sides of the center to get to plot the foci of the hyperbola. So there's a shifted example with three things. It doesn't get you parabolas in there, but uh, that's a, a little, parabolas are pretty special in this way. And that's